Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to another episode of It's All Relative. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Many of us, if not all of us, know someone in our families or in our extended families who may at some point in time battled with some form of cancer. Uh, some have even very sadly lost that battle. I am in my hometown of Mombasa, Kenya, and I'm grateful to have with us Sister Sajida Jan Mahmud, who was diagnosed with breast cancer and with the help of treatment, fought the cancer and she's here with us today to share her story. Sister Sajida, thank you so much for taking the time and being with us here today. Thank you, Rizwan. Um, I'm grateful that I can talk about myself and maybe my story can help others. Absolutely. Excellent. So let's start from the very beginning. Okay. Um, how did it all happen? Uh, actually, it happened in uh, June, end of June 2016. Okay. Uh, just at the end of the month, suddenly I felt a small lump on top of my right breast. And uh, you know, as we never take this serious, um, I felt it's just a small pimple and then I, I didn't take care of it. But I just want to advise others yeah. that please, if you see something like this, mm. don't wait the way I was, I was waiting. Okay. After a week, it became like a bottle top. It popped out like a bottle top. Wow. So my husband said, I better go to hospital right. and uh, have a checkup. Right. So I went to Mombasa hospital. Mm -hmm. I met my GP, Dr. Odongo, and he said, I better have an ultrasound. Uh, the ultrasound was done and the doctor who were there during the ultrasound were not happy. So they said, I better stay back and do a biopsy core 3. Okay. Normally biopsy core 3 are only done when you have a mass. <coughs> the lump is a mass. Right. I had a bit of doubt, but I said, no, it's nothing. And uh, he did the biopsy and uh, I was waiting for the result. Okay. At, the, at that time I was 45 years old. All right. Um, now, I, I don't know much about cancer, probably as much as you do now, but from what I understand, there's always certain stages and, and levels. You know, can you tell us if are there certain stages in breast cancer or, you know, what stage were you? Did, did all this happen uh, for you? There are uh, four stages. The first one uh, is stage one, which the doctor can remove the lump. Ah, and then okay. uh, you might not need a chemo or a radio. Correct. Uh, the sac from the second stage, there is always uh, they remove the, the breast itself. So just okay. to protect the, the patient not to have uh, any reoccurrence mm, or mm, you see. Okay. And uh, I was myself on stage 2B. So I was operated and I got a mastectomy done by Dr. Palki. Yep. He's a good surgeon here in Mombasa. Okay. And uh, when you do the operation, he said to my husband that it's better to do our duty than to look for the beauty. Right, of course. So this, That's was, the, this was a positive yeah. thing which Absolutely. he said to my husband and this made us go ahead away with the mastectomy. Okay. Let's, let's make it a little bit personal. Okay. Um, you know, what were the emotions that were felt or how did you feel when you first found out that this is, it's, it's actually a bit serious? Um, I got the report on Monday, as I said, uh, my biopsy was done. Yeah. So in the middle, I had the weekend after the biopsy. I don't know. I had some feelings that something mm. is wrong. You know, we have sometimes feelings of when course. something is Absolutely. going to happen. Yeah. You have yeah. those feelings. I don't know. I had some feelings in myself that no, this is something wrong, but I was positive. So on Monday, when I got the report, the doctor uh, Mombasa, the GP told me that you are going through uh, breast cancer, your stage is to be. Okay, I was a bit shocked, but not that much because my, my aim was to do, my aim was to know what next. Mm. So I just asked him, what is next now? Right. So he said, you need to see a surgeon. As I said before, Correct. we met the surgeon and he did the needful. Okay, now just, just a small question. Um, is this something that, uh, how does it happen? Is, is it, does it come down, family history, or can it just happen to a, a random person? Uh, was, do, do you know? Uh? 
Okay, I have uh, cancer uh, in my family. Okay. Uh, breast cancer, lung cancer, but I feel cancer does not come with family. Okay. It can even have happen with a hormonal imbalance. Mm. And this is not only for a man, for a woman, which we always say that breast cancer is always there. Yeah. I would like to say the men also should take care. Of course. At their age. All right. Um, let's let's go into the treatment, uh, which is probably very important uh, for our audience to know. Uh, tell us a little bit about the the treatment process. How did it begin, and what did it entail? Um, after my mastectomy done, uh, the doctor asked me to to do chemotherapy because okay. uh, when they remove my breast they have to remove some leaf nodes right. and uh, one of my leaf nodes was already touched with cancer cells oh, okay. so the doctor advised me to have uh, uh, eight chemotherapy so eight sessions yes eight okay. sessions of chemotherapy and after the eight sessions i went through 30 radiotherapy sessions wow okay and and what in your opinion was the most challenging part of these sessions? The chemo was a challenge also. Um, there are many side effects. Right. But you have to be positive. Yep. Uh, especially my chemo went well because uh, my husband was there. My children was there. Yeah. Actually, I missed my son. Yeah. During this chemo. He's in, he's he's in Toronto. In, yes. Yeah, he's yes. in Toronto. I really missed him. But Alhamdulillah, I had my husband, uh, Zahir Abbas, and uh, my two daughters, Farhana and Mohaimina, right. who were hand-to-hand -hand with me, Excellent. and I could face the challenge well. No, oh, that's perfect. Um, is there, uh, you know, we, we, we hear or read about this a lot or see it a lot, the, the, the hair loss, was, was that one of the side effects yes. um, to the treatment? Yes, it was. So it was. It was How did you deal with that? <laughs> it's really difficult. <laughs> it was really difficult. It's not easy right. to lose your hair just like this and yeah. to become bold. Um, just after my first chemotherapy, two weeks later, I started to lose my hair. Um, thank God at that time, my mom was with me. Yeah. She supported me at that time. And you know, as we said, parents dua yeah. is, the most, yeah. is the most important thing you have with you. Yeah. My mom was with me and she really supported me. And I can say most is my husband. Right. Because once I became bold, he yeah. used to come home and knock on my head and said, knock, knock, I'm here. <laughs> so that so was making some, me. Yeah. some humor to it, yeah, oh, yeah, which is yeah. always nice. Yeah. It's he always he good. actually, every lunchtime, dinner, morning or night, whatever time, he used to knock on my head and said, I'm here. Yeah, so no, this, was, this was really sub making me, uh, giving me positive vibes. Uh, excellent, that was perfectly put. Um, you, you talked about your family and, and the impact they had. Uh, what about on, on, on the support network side? Because, you know, we've, we've heard and read that uh, for cancer patients, there always is a support network yes. outside of the family. Yes. Uh, were you involved in, in, in such networks? Yes, we, uh, we have two support groups here in Mombasa. Yeah. Uh, one is Bracasco, which is only for breast cancer. Ah, okay. And the second one is the Aga Khan support group, which uh, I am the head over there. And uh, we arrange two uh, workshops every three months. And that group is only with uh, different type of cancer. Mm. So we arrange those workshops, we talk, we have uh, old people coming around, right. um, so it becomes positive for each other. Of course. And especially my doctor, yeah. Dr. Riaz Kasmani, who is an oncologist here in Aga Khan Hospital. Yeah. He was really supportive during mm. these sessions. <clears throat> and uh, not to forget my team, the, uh, the chemotherapy team. Right, the team that was yeah, looking they, after oh, you. It, they were excellent. I have so many people who I can thank for. Excellent. Good. Um, <clears throat> I want to make this a little bit, uh, uh, I guess, let's touch on a little bit of spirituality. Um, you know, you talked about your family, the, we, we touched on your support network, but what, what was it like when it, when it comes to you and your faith and your religion? How much of a role, you know, because it, it, it's a make or break point. Because, you know, you can, it can either weaken your faith or strengthen your faith when we're faced with tests and challenges in life. How did that 
play out for you? In the beginning, let's say that we lose faith. Because right. when you hear that you got cancer, yeah, exactly. it's so yeah. difficult for you and you lose faith. Yeah. But you shouldn't. Mm. You should hold the hands of Allah. Yeah. And yep. without prayers, without uh, His support, nothing can happen. No, of so course. don't forget to pray. In this situation, I know you go through more negative vibes than positive. Yeah. But have faith, think positive and don't stop praying because praying will bring you up. Absolutely. I want to go back a little bit into the, the treatment. Obviously, you know, there's so many sessions that, that you went through. At any point, did you ever consider giving up or was it too much at, at some point? Um, you know, did you ever think like you, you just wanted it to end and you didn't want to continue with it? Um, some, I think on the first one. Yeah. When uh, I got my first chemo, right. uh, two weeks later, I started to lose my hair. And then uh, because of my white cells dropped down so badly, yeah. I was admitted to hospital. And uh, the doctor started those neuters injection, which we say is to, be, to boost the right. white cells. I was down. I said, no, I don't want to do this. Right. But later on, when I went through my second one, I said no. It's it's okay. It started getting I can, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I had I started to have those uh, positive vibe. Right. And um, I said no. I have to do it because my children were there. They were really caring about me. Right. And um, actually, I can even say the care, I, the most care I got is my Jaffrey family. Right. In school, I'm right. a teacher myself. Yes. And Jaffrey, I work in Jaffrey Academy. Right. And uh, Jaffrey School, all my sub all my friends over there, the teachers, the support staff, Your we can even family. say, yeah, yeah. extended. Yeah. They are a family. Absolutely. And the way they supported me, and yeah, I remember one thing. Yeah. You talk about the hair fall. Yeah. Yeah. Let <laughs> me tell you something. Yeah. Um, I have I had two teachers with me. One yeah. is still there. One has left. Their names is uh, Mrs. Eva and uh, Mrs. Aveline. Mm -hmm. When I started to lose my hair one day in the staff room, I just put my hand inside my, my scarf and I removed my hair. I said, look, Eva, Aveline, look, I'm losing. And I started to cry. Yeah. So they both came to me and they said, do you think you feel better if we become bold with wow. you? <laughs> so that was so nice of Very them. Touching, and yeah. it was so touching mm. that they I just started to laugh and then they said Sarita how come you are laughing now and instead of and you are crying I said look I will be in scarf even if I become bold that's true what about that's you if you <laughs> become bold so then you have to yeah. start wearing scarf like me absolutely so you know these, these small small things really it just added me. the yeah. positive vibe yeah, yeah. it added what would you say to somebody now now that you've come through the treatment you've come out stronger what would you say to somebody who has just been diagnosed with breast cancer? Now that you've been through it, of course, you would have some guidance for them. I have a friend who recently went through breast cancer. Right. Um, I supported her. And the only thing I would like to say, don't be afraid. Don't mm. be afraid. It's there. Kick it. <laughs> right. If not, you are the loser. Absolutely. You have to think positive. You know it is there, it is in your body, even if you do your chemo, your therapy, it will be there. But you have right. to kick it. On the first stage, kick it out and then think something else. And, and what happens after? Because obviously I know well, we would hope that life goes back to normal. Is there any parts of it that, um, how do I say this? Uh, checkups, how does that work? H how often are the checkups? Is there a chance that it could uh, come back again? You know, we've, we've heard and read things. Uh, how, how does that part work after you've, you've kicked it, I guess? Yeah, after my radiotherapy, uh, we can say it's three years now. Okay. Alhamdulillah. I'm having an, every month I'm having a checkup with my oncologist. Right. Uh, every three months I'm having a blood test. Yep. So, and uh, every six months we are doing a tumor test yep. in the body yep. and uh, every year I go through a CT scan just right. to check if everything is fine inside right. the body. Okay. So far, Alhamdulillah. 
and uh, the only thing I can say that do not miss your checkup. Ah, of course. And uh, for breast cancer, after your uh, treatment, there are some patients does not need tablets mm. because they have a ER and PR which can be positive or negative. Right. So mine was both positive. So now I'm on a 10 years tablet. Okay. I have to take one tablet every day. Yeah. But alhamdulillah, I'm fine. Good. Excellent. And, and, and we hope and pray that it stays that way. Yeah, inshallah. Um, because diet is such a big part of our life, obviously, is. is there anything that you can't eat anymore or anything you're told not to eat? Is there anything like that or? Sugar. Sugar. <laughs> Sugar. Of course. We yeah. say sugar is sweet, yeah. but, fun for, but for cancer, yeah. sugar is poison. Wow. Okay. You have so sugar. to be very careful with sugar. It's not that your life ends up there. Right. right. As my doctor said, that you are not going to die without sugar. Right. If you feel like having a, a black forest cake, yeah. <laughs> take it at least once a week or once a month. So in moderation, yeah, of course. You, you can take it. But no major changes to the diet, per diet se. Diet is the only thing, just take care of more oily food. Right, ah, fried food. Yeah, yes, fried course. food. Yeah. But uh, in the beginning, okay. actually now I do take, but yes. I moderate my, my diet. Of course. And is there anything you, you, you want to say to the women of our community? Um, I mean, I know you touched on it, that it applies to men as well. Yeah. Maybe not so much, but what message would you have um, for the women in our community and, and around the world? Um, the main thing is that uh, we need a yearly checkup. Right. You have to do that. Whether you have it or not. Whether you have yeah. it or not. You better have an ultrasound at least once a year. Mm. Um, you, either you can go to a GP and request an ultrasound or you can meet an oncologist. Right and uh, have an ultrasound and uh, the main important is a yearly checkup right that's key. and in case if something comes up god forbid yeah don't lose hope of course go for it excellent i know i know that this hasn't been easy for you even even the last 20 minutes hasn't been easy because there's a lot of things that you probably didn't want to have to talk about again so I, I, I'm extremely grateful and, and, and thank you for, 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 for being here and sharing your story. I know it wasn't easy, um, but, but I do thank you that you, you, you had the courage to come and, and, and talk about this. And it is my hope that it will, um, it will benefit many people, uh, many people out there. Uh, any any final, final words? Actually, I'm grateful that I can share my story. Maybe there are many women who are going through this breast cancer and they do chemo and therapy, they lose hope. Right. Maybe after this session, they will see standing, sitting like this in front of you. Right. They will have the positive vibe that no, we can sit back, Excellent. we can stand again and we can live again. Excellent. Thank uh, you. Thank you so much. At the end, there is only yeah. one thing I would like to say. Yeah. I would like to say thank you to all my family and friends who came right. hand to hand to help me, not only uh, emotionally, but even financially. Chemos and therapy are not easy. Mm. They are very expensive treatment, but I just want to say to everybody, if you hear that any of your family member is going through cancer and needs chemo and therapy, stand for them. Thank you. That's, that's excellent. Thank you so much once Thank again you so much, for Rizwan. taking the time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you've all uh, benefited from, from today's episode. And I will be putting up uh, on the screen below uh, Sister Sajida's contact information. She'd be more than happy for you to uh, reach out to her if you have any questions. And she'd be happy to provide you with any guidance uh, or support uh, that you may need. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And inshallah, I will see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.